Hello, Dr. Nasir. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you so much for having us today. Pleasure is mine. Thank you. Can you please introduce yourself to our clients? Um, so my name is Dr. Nasir uh, Dean. I'm a medical officer based here in uh, Kenya uh, with practice in outpatient and inpatient practice. Currently, I've uh, worked uh, for the last two years or so uh, dealing with COVID ICU patients, critical patients. And, wow. uh, and uh, that's basically what I've been doing. Yes. Correct. That's really yeah. impressive. Yeah, so this interview is about COVID-19 vaccine. Yes. I'll appreciate if you go through the questions and you give me information one by one. Sure. No problem. The first question we have here, how do I know which vaccine information source is accurate? Um, as you're aware, since the vaccine has become uh, available for this new COVID, uh, COVID disease, there's been so many information and it's quite difficult to know which one is correct and which one is false. Correct. Uh, typically, uh, mm -hmm. given that we are a member of uh, the WHO countries, eh, the best vaccine information is usually found on their website, WHO, mm -hmm. at the portal of vaccine, COVID vaccine information. They give the most reliable, most up-to-date, and most accurate information. Mm -hmm. So that will be the most or the best ideal place to get any kind of information from regarding COVID-19 vaccines. Correct. And do you guys currently offer vaccine in this hospital? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. We do, just like most uh, hospitals within Nairobi in Kenya. We do offer all the three forms of major vaccines, uh, the AstraZeneca the Moderna, the Pfizer, and even Johnson & Johnson. So we do have quite a large number of vaccines Correct. with different efficacies and different efficiencies. So uh, it's up to for the patient to decide which one is best for them. So they just have to go through the website and register and yes. they can come on a specific date that they pick or the restaurant mm -hmm. or the hospital offer them. Yes, yes. Correct. The second question I have here, how was the vaccine developed so quickly? Um, it was not really quickly either. It was quite quick and, you know, science had really had a leap in the last uh, few decades or so. And uh, the reason as to why it uh, relatively looks quite quicker is because uh, initially vaccines tend, tend to have taken a long period of time for you to be approved that you're able to give vaccines. But uh, I'll give you an example of uh, this company called uh, Pfizer. The reason as to why they were able to, to do to approve their vaccination in such a very short period of time is that the three main phases of vaccination were all squeezed into one, whereby as you're starting phase one trial, perhaps phase two and phase three were also going on. Things that will have taken one over the other will have taken years was squeezed in within months. You understand? Correct. And like, this is a good thing or? It is a good thing because uh, remember that uh, it was an emergency. We really, needed, we really needed a vaccine to try and help and flatten the curve that we are currently doing. Remember that unfortunately we've lost around 5 million people. Uh, may they rest in peace. That's quite a large amount of uh, people who have died from a disease that was not known two years ago. Sadly. So uh, for it to have uh, taken a short period of time and saved quite a large number of the population is an achievement in science has been able to accomplish in the last few years. And uh, I would say that it was done in a, not in a quick way, mm -hmm. all right? It was three, it was still going through the, all the process that all other vaccines before it have gone through, but in a more compressed manner, mm -hmm. yes. Correct. Uh, the second question is that, is it mandatory for me to get the vaccine? I know the answer, but I want to hear it from yeah, you. Yes. Um, COVID, uh, especially in our country, it's not mandatory. We don't have a COVID-19 vaccine mandate by the government. And in most countries, we don't have COVID-19 mandates. But however, in terms of travel, in terms of uh, other countries or other jurisdictions, you do have some mandates that are required. So we do need to vaccinate the population. That being said, it is something that is uh, within the duty of all citizens or all people to try and take the vaccine so that they can not only protect themselves, but protect those people that they interact with. So I would say it is uh, not cultural or anything but it is mandatory for, ethical mandatory, if I may put it, so that you can be able to help your fellow man. Correct, and unfortunately, so. people are taking vaccine nowadays because of traveling. Yes. They do not, they all forget the fact that you have to do it because 
it's good for you. It's good for you. Yeah, yeah it's yes. true. Mm. Uh, can COVID vaccine cause COVID variants? It is highly unlikely, and I will also as far as go and say uh, it's impossible. Uh, variants do exist. Variants come about naturally, whereby uh, vaccines will change one or two of their proteins and look completely different from its predecessors. So vaccination doesn't change the variants of a virus. A virus naturally changes its proteins to become a different variant. So oh. it's unlikely that a vaccine causes COVID mm. variants. Wow, that's interesting. Mm. Is it safe to take paracetamol before receiving the COVID-19 vaccine? It is safe. Uh, of course... Is it going to have any effect anyway? Uh, no, not that much from the studies that uh, we've, we've seen. There's no drug-to-drug -drug interaction between the vaccine and paracetamol. In fact, even when I was taking my vaccine, I had to take prophylactic paracetamol because I knew the side effects that will be coming. So you took it before? Yes. So that's your advice as well? Yes. Cause take it before you go? Uh, not necessarily. You take it most of the time. You take it um, after you experience the pain and any of that. But if you take it before, it doesn't cause any harm. But and how long before? I would say you take it after you've gotten the vaccine and you're starting to feel the side effects of the vaccine, which include the uh, injection site pain, fevers, chills, and the like. Body the ache. Uh, yes. I personally had body ache. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. correct. Will a COVID-19 vaccine alter my DNA? <laughs> that uh, is a very interesting question. It's quite a, it's quite a common question, unfortunately. Is but, it? Uh, yeah, it is a quite co a common question. Okay. There's a lot of backlash, especially the anti-vaxxers and people who don't want the vaccine. They tend to say that it's uh, something that will alter your DNA. And uh, that is quite not true, because uh, especially these mRNA vaccines, which it's Pfizer is one of them, it doesn't alter anything to do with your DNA. What it does is that it goes into your cell. It's already a viral, it's already an mRNA copy of the vaccine. So it goes into your cells, it activates the protein formation of your cells to form some certain proteins. These certain proteins that are formed are usually the proteins that are elicited in the normal virus. So your body recognizes these proteins and then forms antibodies against those proteins so that next time there's going to be a protein or a virus with those proteins, it's going to be attacked and the body will defend it. But it doesn't alter your DNA, it doesn't go into the nucleus in whatever capacity, it's usually just in the cytoplasm. Wow, that's quite interesting information. Uh, is it safe for me to get a vaccine if I want to have a child one day? I yes. know the answer. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. There's this uh, side effect that is being uh, thrown out there about infertility. Uh, studies have been done and it's unlikely that such such association is even present. It doesn't cause infertility, not from the studies that has been gathered, not from any of that. For both genders, right? Sorry? For, For both, both genders, genders, both yeah. male and female, yes. Correct. Uh, where are the effects of, what are the effects of the vaccine? So the side effects of the vaccines, now, the true side effects are things that are related to, uh, to during administration and they're related to the activation of your immune system, okay? So the vaccine is a foreign thing, as I had mentioned before. So you're going to have pain at the injection site, you're going to have fevers, headaches, chills, rigors for the next few days after the mm -hmm. vaccination. And this is because of activation of your immune system. So it's quite common, even the more immune, the more immunogenicity you are, the more hyperactive in terms of your immune system is, the more the side effects will be. And is it for sure you will have the side effects? It's not for sure. There are some people who go through three, four days, or even one week after injection without any side effects. That is because the immunogenicity is usually low, and they tend not to react overtly to that vaccine. Okay. And yes. uh, side effects for the first dose and second dose, are they different? They are, it's more on the first dose. The second dose tends to have less side effects. And why so? Because the, you had already exp exposed to it before. The body has already been exposed to that foreign the thing before. The body is before. familiar to So it. it's more familiar and yeah. it's more chilled about it. It just sees and then does its thing to make 
to make antib antibodies instead of now starting to attack it. True, correct. Yes. Uh, are COVID-19 vaccines safe for people with liver disease or any other, any other chronic health conditions? At the moment, patients who have chronic illnesses, uh, be it liver, kidney, heart, uh, any of the other chronic conditions, diabetes, hypertension, they are advised to take the COVID-19 vaccine because of the safety profile. Mm -hmm. Uh, so those patients tend to do it, yeah, not to do it. No, they are advised to take the vaccine Correct. because of the benefit from vaccination and being immunized against COVID-19. Unfortunately, COVID-19 targets the old and those with comorbids. And uh, if you do have a comorbid and you're not vaccinated and you unfortunately get COVID, it's going to be a more pronounced infection okay. compared to someone who doesn't have okay, sure. comorbids. So that is why even with comorbids, still take the COVID-19 vaccine because it's going to have an added advantage for you. Okay. Uh, from the research, countless research that has been done, association between patients with heart issues, liver issues, kidney, kidney issues, issues, they have not been shown to be substantial enough to warrant the vaccine not being given to such populations. Correct. Yes. The last question I have, what is the duration of protection after vaccination? Um, that one is still an ongoing thing. As you're aware, the vaccine has been with us for the for the last year or so, the yeah, disease has been less. here for the last one and a half years or so, or one or two years or so. So it's still something that is evolving after every single day. What we know is different vaccines have different form of immunization. Immunization or becoming immune to a certain disease tends to occur within two weeks after the last dose. So if I'm taking the AstraZeneca, for example, uh, the first dose I've taken, and then eight weeks later or 12 weeks later, I take the second dose, then two weeks after the second dose is when I can say I am immunized. Now, this immunization phase, does it last six months? Does it last 12 one months? Year, yeah. Does it last one year, one and a half years? We are not so certain. It's an ongoing field. Like at the moment, we still have some studies that are saying that you need booster, like for example, in the Pfizer, six months after your second dose. Correct. So uh, it's still an ongoing thing, and we don't have the clear picture. But mm -hmm. we are learning as we go on with science. Correct. And for the last things, what is your advice for our audience regarding COVID-19 vaccine? Um, it is a safe initiative. It's a safe vaccine. Uh, the risks are quite small compared to the benefits that the population will have in terms of eradicating this disease that has been ravaging generations and countries and peoples for the last two years or so. I would say that uh, if you have the opportunity to take the vaccine, I would say it is your duty to take that vaccine without any mandates, without any of that, for your own health and the, those that you love and those close to you. Correct. Yes. Mm. So if our audience wants to find you, where they can find you, which hospital? <laughs> So I'm based here in Karen, uh, Karen also Hospital. Karen Hospital. Nairobi South Hospital. So that's where I'm usually located. You are there every day? Yes. Okay, great. Mm. So our audience can find you here. Okay, thank you. Thank so you much. very much. A pleasure. Thank you. Okay, all the best. Thanks.